In physiology and medicine, dehydration is the excessive loss of body water, with an accompanying disruption of metabolic processes. The term dehydration may be used loosely to refer to any condition where fluid volume is reduced. Most commonly, it refers to hypernatremia, but is also used to refer to hypovolemia. Dehydration occurs when water loss exceeds water intake, usually due to exercise or disease. Most people can tolerate a 3 to 4% decrease in body water without difficulty. A 5 to 8% decrease can cause fatigue and dizziness. Over 10% can cause physical and mental deterioration, accompanied by severe thirst. A decrease more than 15 to 25% of the body water is invariably fatal. Mild dehydration is characterized by thirst and general discomfort and usually resolves with oral rehydration. Definition Dehydration occurs when water intake is insufficient to replace free water loss due to normal physiologic processes and other causes. Hypovolemia is specifically a decrease in volume of blood plasma, isotonic intravascular volume depletion, whereas the loss of intracellular pure water in dehydration results in an increase in salt concentration, hypernatremia. Some authors have reported three types of dehydration based on serum sodium levels, hypotonic or hyponatremic, hypotonic or hypernatremic, and isotonic or isonatremic. The terms hyponatremic and unitremic dehydration refer to hypovolemia. In humans, it is thought that the most commonly seen type of dehydration by far is isotonic dehydration, but this effectively refers to hypovolemia. Dehydration is thus a term that has loosely been used to mean loss of water, regardless of whether it is as water and solutes or as free water. Hypotonic dehydration refers to solute loss, and thus loss of intravascular volume, but in the presence of exaggerated intravascular volume depletion for a given amount of total body water gain. Neurological complications can occur in hypotonic and hypotonic states. The former can lead to seizures, while the latter can lead to osmotic cerebral edema upon rapid rehydration. Signs and Symptoms Symptoms of dehydration include thirst, headache, general discomfort, loss of appetite, dry skin, decreased urine volume, confusion, unexplained tiredness, and irritability. More prolonged or severe dehydration leads to abnormally dark urine, rapid breathing, constipation, decreased blood pressure, dizziness or fainting when standing up due to orthostatic hypertension, listlessness, insomnia, and loss of skin elasticity. Athletes may suffer a loss of performance and experience flushing, low endurance, rapid heart rates, elevated body temperatures, and rapid onset of fatigue. Untreated dehydration generally results in delirium, extreme lethargy, seizures, sunken fontanel in infants, fainting, sunken eyes, unconsciousness, swelling of the tongue and, in extreme cases, death. Blood tests may show hyperalbuminemia, an overabundance of protein in the blood plasma, poor kidney function, or excess concentration hemoglobin. Urine analysis may show concentrated urine. Dehydration symptoms generally become noticeable after 2% of normal euhydration water volume has been lost. The symptoms of dehydration become increasingly severe with greater water loss. Heart and respiration rates begin to increase to compensate for decreased plasma volume and blood pressure, while body temperature may rise because of decreased sweating. At around 5% to 6% water loss, Grogginess or sleepiness, severe headaches or nausea, and a tingling in the limbs may all be experienced. With 10% to 15% fluid loss, muscles may become spastic, skin may shrivel and wrinkle, vision may dim, urination will be greatly reduced and may become painful, and delirium may begin. Losses greater than 15% are usually fatal as organs fail, starting with the kidneys. In people over age 50, the body a Euro unregistered trademark as thirst sensation diminishes and continues diminishing with age. Many senior citizens suffer symptoms of dehydration. Dehydration along with hypothermia results in the elderly dying suddenly during extreme hot weather. In studies of terminally ill patients who have chosen to die, deaths by terminal dehydration are generally peaceful and are not associated with suffering when supplemented with adequate pain medication. 
cause, water leaves the body in many ways, categorized into either a Euro-OE sensible or a Euro-water loss or a Euro-OE insensible water loss depending on whether the loss can be perceived by the senses. A Euro-OE sensible or a Euro-water loss includes such processes as sweating and vomiting. A Euro-OE insensible water loss occurs mainly through the skin and respiratory tract. In humans, Dehydration can be caused by a wide range of diseases and states that impair water homeostasis in the body. These include the following, external or stress-related causes, prolonged physical activity with sweating without consuming adequate water, especially in a hot or dry environment, prolonged exposure to dry air, for example in high-flying airplanes, blood loss or hypertension due to physical trauma, loss of fluid through weeping burns or other injury, crying, diarrhea, fever, hypothermia, shock, vomiting or nausea, use of methamphetamine, amphetamine and other stimulants, excessive consumption of alcoholic beverages. Infectious diseases, cholera, gastroenteritis, sheagolosis, yellow fever. Malnutrition, electrolyte disturbance, hyponatremia, hyponatremia, especially from restricted salt diets. Fasting, recent rapid weight loss patient refusal of nutrition and hydration, inability to swallow. Other causes of obligate water loss, severe hyperglycemia, especially in diabetes mellitus, glycosuria, uremia. Diabetes insipidus, acute emergency dehydration event, foodborne illness, Crohn's disease, likelihood of dehydration increases with consumption of diuretics, including caffeinated or alcoholic beverages. Prevention, dehydration is avoided by drinking sufficient water. Adults require 2 euro 3 L of fluid per day. Drinking water beyond the needs of the body entails little risk when done in moderation, since the kidneys will efficiently remove excess water through the urine with a large margin of safety. For routine activities, thirst is normally an adequate guide to maintain proper hydration. With exercise, exposure to hot environments, or a decreased thirst response, additional water may be required. An accurate determination of fluid volume lost during a workout can be made by performing weight measurements before and after a typical exercise session. Normal water loss occurs through the lungs as water vapor, through the skin by perspiration and by diffusion through the skin, or through the kidneys as urine. Some water is also lost through the feces. In warm or humid weather or during heavy exertion, However, the water loss can increase by a factor of 10 or more through perspiration, all of which must be promptly replaced. In extreme cases, the losses may be great enough to exceed the body's ability to absorb water from the gastrointestinal tract. In these cases, it is not possible to drink enough water to stay hydrated, and the only way to avoid dehydration is to either prehydrate or find ways to reduce perspiration when large amounts of water are being lost through perspiration and concurrently replaced by drinking, maintaining proper electrolyte balance becomes an issue. Drinking fluids that are hypotonic or hypotonic with respect to perspiration may have grave consequences as the total volume of water turnover increases. Treatment The treatment for minor dehydration, often considered the most effective, is drinking water and stopping fluid loss. Plain water restores only the volume of the blood plasma, inhibiting the thirst mechanism before solute levels can be replenished. Solid foods can contribute to fluid loss from vomiting and diarrhea. Urine concentration and frequency will customarily return to normal as dehydration resolves. In more severe cases, correction of a dehydrated state is accomplished by the replenishment of necessary water and electrolytes. As oral rehydration is less painful, less invasive, less expensive, and easier to provide, it is the treatment of choice for mild dehydration. Solutions used for intravenous rehydration must be isotonic or hypotonic. Pure water injected into the veins will cause the breakdown of red blood cells. When fresh water is unavailable, seawater and alcohol will worsen the condition. Urine contains a similar solute concentration to seawater and numerous guides advise against its consumption in survival situations. For severe cases of dehydration where fainting, unconsciousness, or other severely inhibiting symptom is present, emergency attention is required. 
fluids containing a proper balance of replacement electrolytes are given orally or intravenously with continuing assessment of electrolyte status. Complete resolution is the norm in all but the most extreme cases. Some research indicates that artificial hydration to alleviate symptoms of dry mouth and thirst in the dying patient may be futile. See also, hydrational fluids, terminal dehydration, dryness, notes. References, Ira Abayok, MD, Patient Refusal of Nutrition and Hydration, Walking the Ever Finer Line. American Journal Hospice and Palliative Care, PPA 8 Euro 13. External links, Definition of Dehydration by the U.S. National Institutes of Health's Medline Plus Medical Encyclopedia, Rehydration Project at Rehydrate.org, Steiner, M.J. DeWalt, Da. Bierley, J.S. Is This Child Dehydrated? J.A.M.A., The Journal of the American Medical Association 291, 2746 a Euro 54 doi, 10.1001-JAMA. 291.22.2746. PMIDA 15187057A